Whenever I have top shelf talent on the AT&T sports line, you know, folks, time to get your crown on, fine wine and spirits, Mr. Ted Arnaud. I'll save that for later. Believe me, I will. Now, we're going to talk the NFL Combines in Indianapolis, but some Steeler news trending today. James Harrison gets a two-year deal. Ted Arnaud, is that a good thing for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, I think it's great. I think he's playing at a level that just is incredible considering his age. And he's got so much. They're just going to have to cut down on his reps. And I think that's why they're going to really be looking for an edge rusher, uh, probably through the draft, although most of the time the draft guys aren't ready for a couple of years. So I think... Don't be surprised if they don't look outside at free agency for an uh, edge rusher. But I, I think having James Harrison gives you the stability, gives you the energy. I mean, the guy's just a wonder, let's face it. All right, now listen. Uh, Mike Mayock, who makes a living with the NFL Network, he and Rich Eisen and the whole crew there at Indianapolis this week, I love what they do. And it's more than the 40-yard dash for we diehards. I love it all. They really do a great job. Some of the edge rushers, these are his um, positional top five rankings for the 2017 draft. Mike Mayock, edge rusher, Miles Garrett out of Texas A&M, Tim Williams out of Alabama, uh, Derek Barnett out of Tennessee, Solomon Thomas out of Stanford, and Tariskis McKinley. He, of course, played the defensive side of the football for UCLA, and their defensive coach, our good friend Tom Bradley, former defensive coordinator at Penn State. So what do you think about those five guys, Ted? I, I think any one of them, the, the, the fear that I have is because of the, the Steelers' draft position, who's going to be available and who fits in best with their system. I think you can go beyond those five guys and, and look at uh, some the, the uh, uh, taco from uh, Michigan. You can look at some of the other guys. There's an edge rusher from Michigan State coming out that looks really good. I think I think – the defensive component of this draft, both secondary and linebackers, is very, very strong. I think the Steelers are in a great position uh, to pick somebody that's going to really help. All right, Le'Veon Bell gets the franchise tag for $12 million. Antonio Brown, who was a sixth-round pick in 2010, he gets a deal for $73 million. And as I've been telling folks, this is just trending in the last couple of hours, reporting, talking to our good friend Kevin Colbert, Director of Football Operations, General Manager of the Steelers. And they said, yeah, Ben will be 35 Thursday, and we are looking ahead to life without him. So this year, those positional five players, Mike Mayock, NFL Network, Deshaun Kaiser, Notre Dame, Deshaun Watson, Clemson, Love to get him. I don't think he'll be around. Mitch Trubisky of North Carolina, Patrick Mahomes the second Texas Tech, and Davis Webb of California. Ted. Yeah, I, I think you're going to have to look at probably Davis Webb uh, in that kind of a category. He's a big, strong guy. He plays more out of a pro, pro position than some of the others. Uh, the other guys have some decision-making issues, but I don't think they're going to be there when the. I think the Steelers are going to be looking in the second or third round for any kind of quarterback that they bring in. My guess would be the third round because they're going to be looking at somebody who's going to be able to sit, carry a, a board for a couple of years, and really understand the system. So they're not going to look at one of the top players. But there's, there's some uh, players in the 6th through 10th position that I think they'll be around in the third round. I think that's where you're going to see the Steelers start looking for a quarterback. Okay, uh, let's take a look at running backs. Uh, Delvin Cook, Florida State. Leonard of Fournette, LSU. Christian McCaffrey of Stanford. Alvin Kamara of Tennessee. And Joe Mixon of Oklahoma. I, think, I don't think any of those are going to fit into the Steelers' mix. I think you're going to see somebody from one of the lower Division One schools uh, Western Michigan's got a great running back. You're going to look at some of those people coming in in the later rounds to try and fill in behind Le'Veon Bell. And I think Le'Veon Bell, this is his test year because of the issues we've talked about before, and that's the availability issue, the fact that he's had some personal conduct issues and the fact that he's had injury issues. I think the Steelers played it exactly right by giving him the franchise tag, letting him see this year what he can do. Can he get rid of those issues? Are there lingering 
uh, injury issues. And uh, so they're, they're going to be looking for somebody because, uh, you know, their, their backups uh, are, are, you know, they're, it's, it's going to be weak from what we can see what they have right now. Um, uh, so uh, oh. I, I think look for the later rounds for running back. All right, let's go wide receiver. Antonio Brown gets the deal. But you've got Eli Rogers and Martavius Bryant pretty rock solid. As far as the provisional positional five for Mike uh, Mayock, NFL Network, Corey Davis, Western Michigan, Mike Williams from Clemson, John Ross of Washington, uh, Copper or Cooper Coop from Eastern Washington, and Zay Jones from East Carolina. So I think they'll pass, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to see them jump in. Uh, remember, they got uh, Brown from a six-round draft choice from Central Michigan. Uh, the kid from Western Michigan's going to go probably first round. He's probably the best receiver in the in the draft, in my opinion. So look for them to fill in maybe fifth to seventh round. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a priority for them right now. Now, next year it might be. Uh, it, and it, a lot of it depends on what Martavis Bryant does. If, if he can get over these character issues and get his head straight, we know that he's got the capabilities, and they've got good young receivers and coats. You know, if they can get the experience that they got, let's face it, in the playoffs is unbelievable. So uh, they're, they're going to be ready for uh, for better stuff next year with the receivers they got. I just don't see them jumping in for a big – I think the big-time drafts, one through three, it's going to be defense again. All right, we're going to head out to Indianapolis shortly and talk to Greg Diolis. Who is out there? He, of course, a professional scout, uh, um, agent with uh, Vantage Management Group. One of his clients, Derek Wolf from nearby Beaver Local High School, part of the Denver Broncos. Any of these names ring a bell with Cleveland, the Browns possibly jumping in the mix, and they might be looking for a quarterback, wouldn't you think? I, I wouldn't be surprised. They have not done well with early round quarterbacks. I wouldn't be surprised if they trade down and, and get some fill-in positions and look for a quarterback that can that, that can grow with the franchise. They just have not done well trying to pick a franchise quarterback. And it may be better for them either to go in the free agency market or, or uh, use what they have, which isn't much, but uh, and, and get somebody in the maybe second, third round that they can bring in and, and grow. They just haven't done well with their top picks. All right. We're going to talk to uh, Greg about the uh, offensive tackle, interior offensive line, defensive line, more on the edge rusher, because that's something that would be in the mix for the Steelers, linebacker, cornerback, and safety. But I want to finish with Ted before we move on to some of the local colleges. The Indianapolis Combines, NFL, love it. It's on the NFL Network. Don't miss it. And don't forget Rich Eisen, Rich Eisen doing that 40-yard dash along with Play 60 to benefit Marlo Thomas's great effort, St. Jude's Research Hospital. So that's something you might want to check out, too. Okay, tight end. you got to believe Steelers are going to really pass on this as well, too. O.J. Howard, Alabama. Um, David Nookyoy of Miami. Uh, Evan Ingram of Old Miss. Jack Butt of Michigan. And Gerald Everett of South Alabama. Ted. Yeah, I don't see that the extending an uh, early round pick. Uh, they got my man Jesse James, who I think is going to really fill in. Uh, they've got and they've got some mystery, uh, you know, obviously with some of their other players. But uh, I, I just think they're going this defense. The defensive market is so strong right now in this draft that I just see them using at least two out of the first three rounds in filling that and not really looking at the tight end situation. All right, I'm going to talk to uh, Greg about Pitt and also Ohio State, but I want to talk Penn State and West Virginia with Ted as far as who is headed to the NFL Combine. Let's begin with Penn State's Chris Godwin and Garrett Sickles. Now, Godwin, six foot one, 205-pound wideout, posted a stellar junior campaign. Delaware native had 59 receptions for 982 yards, 11 touchdowns, all team highs. Well, Sickles led an underrated uh, front four. The defensive end posted a team high, 12.5 uh, tackles for loss and six sacks. So those two guys, Penn State, NFL Combines this week, Ted. Yeah, I... I like the, uh, the lineman, defensive lineman from Penn State. I think he's got the kind of situation that you could see the Steelers looking at. And I'm looking at it mostly from the Steelers' perspective, obviously, but I could see them picking somebody like that in the third round. So I'd keep an eye on him. 
All right, up uh, next, uh, the Mountaineers, the five. Tyler Orlowski, defensive back. Rajul Douglas, receiver. Shelton Gibson, defensive end. Uh, Noble Nowichuk, uh, and running back Russell Shell out of Hopewell, who I would love to see get a shot in the National Football League. Of course, he started his uh, collegiate career off at the University of Pittsburgh. Ted? Yeah, I, I would look at him as maybe being a sixth or seventh round pick for the Steelers. They're certainly giving him a very, very good look. He had a great year. Um, you know, West Virginia had a great year. He's got that big-time experience now. Uh, he's just the kind of guy that you'd want to fill in uh, for Le'Veon Bell, um, especially since Williams is, you know, he's not going to be back, and that was your next next one up if Le'Veon Bell got hurt. So it wouldn't surprise me that you see somebody like that come in. Last thing, i got to bring this up. What I love that Mike Mayock does, he even includes special team, positional five, USC Adoree Jackson, uh, Curtis Samuel, Ohio State, Chidobi Awazi out of Colorado, Desmond King, Iowa, and Adam Shaheen out of Ashland. This is how you really make your bones and get an opportunity to be around for that first big contract by hanging in with special teams. That's such an intricate part now in the NFL, especially at these combines, Ted. Well, look at our good friend John Manizak, who uh, walked on and got a $2,500 contract from the Steelers. Nobody gave him much notice till he became a special teams stalwart. He's still coaching special teams at Robert Morris. Uh, I think uh, the, the Steelers... The Steelers usually look at the special teams filling them in with defensive positions, and that wouldn't surprise me. I don't know that they're going to go for a special team specialist, uh, but boy, I'll tell you what, special teams was one of their big weak points last year. Uh, I hope they're looking at uh, that very closely, and when they draft some of these guys in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round, that they're thinking not only the primary position, but how they're going to fill in on special teams. Yeah, he, of course, the head coach at Robert Morris, good friend, so proud of him. And can he move? All I can tell you is if there's one piece of pizza left in the box, and if it's between you and Banny, you <laughs> We've can... already seen that. We've got two less fingers on each of our hands because of that. You could be in trouble. I love John Banizak. Okay, um, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk some presidential politics as well. But, Ted, before we go, 333 players invited to the 2017 NFL scouting, scouting Combine. A lot of people, Lucas Oil Stadium, aren't big fans of it. I am. Why do you like it or not like it? I am a huge fan of it, however. The, I, I tell you what I like is what you don't see. What you don't see are the, the character interviews, and I think that becomes so important in these young players because we've talked so many times that the best ability that a NFL player has is availability, and we've seen the struggles with Le'Veon Bell, Martavis Bryant, and they've got all the talent in the world, but they have not been able to have consist consistent availability. And I think that's what these interviews, the character interviews and the research and the background, I think that's just as important as any of the physical tests these guys have. All right, there you go, folks. Ted Arno, back in a moment, Legacy Studios, talking the joint address to Congress last night, still making major headlines, and most people giving the president two thumbs up for his performance. That's next. 